Welcome to this gathering of the family of Jesus. We gather on lands walked for thousands of years by people of the First Nations. Here, we acknowledge the history, culture, and spirituality of the signatories to Treaty 6 and remember our responsibility as treaty members. We also honor the heritage and gifts of Métis people. Wherever we stand, may we live the respect that our words offer. In the name of Jesus, who is alive in each of you, us, peace to you. Thank you for joining us. My name is Holly Chapel Benoit, and we're coming to you live from Bashaw United Church today. Thanks to Damien for being our tech and Jackie for being moral support. <laughs> and today we also have Evie, so if you hear Cheerios being spilled or screaming, that's her. <laughs> Welcome. We light a candle this morning as a sign of God's presence. If you have a candle where you are, please join us. We gather together in your presence with expectation, hungry for an encounter with you, eager to hear your word. We open our eyes and ears to the presence of the Holy Spirit, looking for the seeds scattered among us this morning fall on fertile soil. We will, they will take root in our hearts and lives and produce an abundant harvest of good words and deeds. Let us worship with our hands as well as our hearts and our voices. From wherever we find ourselves today, in body and in spirit, we bring our hearts together with God. Please join me in prayer. Most gracious God, we greet you once again in this sacred space. We have come because we need to be reminded of your love and your expectations for our living. We are like the vine you planted, watered, and protected. We know in our hearts that we need, want, and desire your presence in our lives. So we come in prayer and listen for your word to speak to our hearts and reveal again your desires for us. Amen. If you 
plant a tomato seed, a carrot seed, and a cabbage seed, in time, with love and care, tomato, carrot, and cabbage plants will grow. If you plant a seed of selfishness in a very short time, it will grow and grow and grow into a heap of trouble. But if you plant a seed of kindness in almost no time at all, The fruits of kindness will grow and grow and grow. And they are very, very sweet. If you plant a seed <laughs> Okay, so we're going to sing a song that's called The Magic Penny and this is a song my mom used to do with me and my sisters and our kids of our church when I was young and it's about sharing love and kindness Remember I, my chorus. Love is something if you give it away, give it away, give it away. Love is something if you give it away, you end up having more. It's just like a magic penny. Hold it tight and you won't have any. Lend it, spend it, and you'll have so many. They'll roll Love is something if you give it away, give it away, give it away. Love is something if you give it away, you end up having more. My money's standy and we like to use it, but love is better if you don't refuse it. It's a treasure and you'll never lose it unless you lock up your door for love. Love is something if you give it away, give it away, give it away. Love is something if you give it away, you end up having more. So let's go dance it till the break of day. And if there's a piper, we can pay. For love is something if you give it away, you end up having more. You end up having God, be our breath, be our song, blow through us, bringing strength to move on. Our world seems inward, defensive, withdrawn. Spirit God, be our song. Patient God, soothe our pride, calm our fear, comfort us when we know Love 
loving God, be our voice, be our prayer, reaching out, joining hands as we share. We seek your guidance through friendship and care, loving God, be our prayer. Spirit God, be our breath, be our song, blow through us. Bringing strength to move on through change, through challenge, we'll greet the new dawn. Spirit, God, be our song. Today's reading, Jesus is teaching beside Lake Galilee, and as the crowd grows, he gets into a boat and begins to speak to them in parables. First, Jesus recounts the parable of the sower, and later he explains its meaning. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew 13, verses 1 to 9 and 18 to 23. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil." But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. (laughs) Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Then the disciples came and asked him, Why do you speak to them in parables? He answered, To you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. For to those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have have will be taken away. The reason I speak to them in parables is that seeing they do not perceive, and hearing they do not listen, nor do they understand. With them indeed fulfilled is the prophecy of Isaiah that says, You will indeed listen, but never understand, and you will indeed look, but never perceive. For this people's heart has grown dull, and their ears are hard of hearing, and they have shut their eyes, so that they might not look with their eyes, or listen with their ears, and understand with their hearts, and turn, and I would heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. Truly I tell you, Many prophets and righteous people longed to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. That is what is sown on the path. For what was sown on rocky ground, this is what one hears who hears the word immediately, receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among the thorns, this is the one who hears the word and cares for the word, but the lure of wealth chokes the word, and it yields nothing. But as for that what was grown on good soil... This is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. Today's sermon is called Love That We Call God is a Strange Attractor by Reverend Don Hutchings. 
and it is based on this reading. Jesus of Nazareth was an obscure, poor, brown Jewish rabbi living in an oppressed part of the Roman Empire, whose death continues to impact the world. His death was relatively unremarkable. Thousands upon thousands of unruly inhabitants were executed during Jesus' lifetime by those who charged by those charged with the task of establishing and maintaining order by force. To the powers that be, Jesus' execution was little more than a routine death of a homeless outcast who spent far too much time creating social unrest. Nothing more than the insignificant death of a troublemaker without influence in the halls of power, who would not or could not moderate his own behavior. He dies under the rule of law, and yet the impact continues to reverberate all around the world nearly 2,000 years after it should have been long forgotten. Late last fall, nobody's really sure exactly when or to whom it happened, but sometime last fall, a person so obscure that history will fail to name them, someone living in an empire where order is maintained by force, got sick and died. The impact of that death has kept millions of us all around the world locked inside our homes, avoiding tiny droplets whose impact upon any one of us could be catastrophic. For months now, I have heard various people refer to these strange times which we are living as chaotic. We wonder what it will take to bring forth light out of the chaos, which continues to swirl around us when the impact of apparently insignificant events can create waves which reverberate throughout creation in an endless whirl and swirl capable of sweeping us off our collective feet and setting us adrift in stormy seas, where are we to find moorings to set us right? It makes sense to look to science as a way of knowing so that we might chart a course to solid ground. Clutching our visions of chaos, Let's cross into unfamiliar scientific territory to explore the contours of what physicists call chaos theory. Actually, it would be more accurate to say, let's examine a small droplet of chaos theory. The term chaos theory was coined back in the 1960s by a mathematician named Edward Lorenz, who worked at MIT as a meteorologist. Lorenz was trying to use a complicated mathematical formula to develop models to predict the weather patterns and systems. During the course of his research, what seemed like an insignificant computer input decision revealed the impact of unintended consequences. Lorenz had rounded off the number 0.506127 to 0.506, assuming the difference of 0.000127 was insignificant that its impact would be inconsequential. Lorenz turned out to be wrong. What appeared to be a tiny inconsequential number turned out to have a significant impact. That tiny number, somewhere in the mere millionths of a difference in the baromic pressure, capable of only an infinitesimal impact on wind speed, no bigger than a baby's sneeze or the beat of a butterfly's wings, that tiny change at the beginning of a weather system turned out to be the difference between a blue sky and a monsoon. Lorenz coined the phrase butterfly effect to describe this phenomenon. Today, quantum physicists use the butterfly effect to describe what happens when a small change in one place in a system can result in a ginormous difference in a later state. The mere flapping of a butterfly wings has a ripple effect which multiplies over time and changes weather patterns thousands of miles away. Yeah. This unintended consequence of our actions are almost unfathomable. Somehow, the randomness of events coming together makes life seem just that, random, and we are left hovering over the formless void, longing for a creative power strong enough to call forth light from the darkness. Fortunately, Not all darkness is terrifying. New life begins with darkness. Whether life is cocooned in the waters of the womb or planted in the darkness of the earth, the seeds of life require darkness to thrive. A few Sundays ago, our minister, Robin King, spoke spoke about this same parable about the sower. Jesus used this parable to teach how important the state of our hearts is. Many read this parable and say, Aha! 
Finally, a parable without hidden meaning, a parable that we can understand. But that was back when we believed that God was in charge of everything, the one who was up there manipulating everything, that God we have long since retired in favor of divine mystery, which lies at the heart of reality, the mystery which is the love we called God. Believing that we live and move and have our being in God, who lives and breathes in, with, through, and beyond us, means that we must dig a little deeper to find the hidden seeds sowed by a sower who lives and breathes in, with, through, and beyond us. Theologian Robin Mayers states in his book, God Saving from Religion, It is comforting to believe that we exist because God intended that we should exist. It means we are here in our present form because, as the property of Genesis asserts, poetry, not property, the poetry of Genesis asserts, humans are the final consummate project of a creator who had us in mind all along. Chaos theory, on the other hand, suggests that we are a one-time, non-repeatable, fantastic, but essentially meaningless occurrence. Go back and introduce even the smallest variable, say, a primate virus, just at the right moment, and your Aunt Martha would not exist, nor would you, nor would anyone else you love. Except that isn't exactly what chaos theory says. It is paradoxically named because Lorenz believed that the results would appear chaotic may in fact be ordered at the outer limits of some mysterious boundary. You never get the same results twice, but there is also a kind of phenomenological edge beyond which those final results never go. Lorenz mapped this boundary and called it a strange attractor. When he looked at his graphs, he realized that although the weather patterns never repeated themselves, they all traced a pattern that was undeniable, a self-imposed elegance that kept what appeared to be chaotic from flying off the page. Some people have compared this boundary, this strange attractor, to God. Even the tiniest seeds are capable of giving birth to the most awesome creations. Your life, my life, our lives together, there are all sorts of possibilities. Random, perhaps unintended consequences almost certainly, but also splendid opportunities. You see, we are all wonderfully made, endowed with the capacity to choose, which means that in addition to circumstances beyond our control, there are also circumstances within our control. Each and every one of us can choose to perpetrate random acts of kindness, outrage, outrageous outpours of generosity, ridiculous displays of hospitality, dangerous demonstrations of courage, along with extravagant acts of love. So what does love look like in these strange and chaotic times? Love looks like you. You speaking out when you hear injustice, listening with a fierce passion to someone who desperately needs to be heard, standing in solidarity with the poor or the oppressed, or tenderly touching the shoulder of someone who is lost, feeding the hungry, giving a cold glass of water, or welcoming a stranger. It's you daring to move beyond your comfort zone, wearing a mask, kneeling in prayer, refusing to give up. Love is you and I working together with all the many embodiments of love. It may appear to the world that your one precious life is insignificant, hardly worth mentioning in the grand scheme of, grand scheme of things. Then suddenly, like the flapping of a butterfly's wings, your random acts begin a journey. We know not where. Meyer insists that to choose is life's most powerful, most spiritual, most godlike activity. We are indeed living in strange and chaotic times. There are forces out there who would have us restore order so that we can return to what is familiar. We could simply just choose to plant some, the same old seeds, or we could put our faith in the strange attractor and trust in the elegance of creation to ensure that we don't fly off into oblivion. For this attractor holds our existence in a miraculous web of tiny occurrences which have power beyond our wildest imaginations. So, let us choose to plant seeds of kindness, generosity, hospitality, and courage, so that love, which is the mystery we call God, can live, 
move, and have being in, with, through, and beyond us. Let us be the creators we were created to be. For we were created out of chaos, and we are held in love, which is the mystery that gives us the audacity to choose what seeds we will plant. Let us be random, outrageous, ridiculous, dangerous, extravagant sowers of the seeds of kindness, generosity, hospitality, and courage. Let us be the love in the world, love which is beyond and beyond and beyond that also. Amen. Please join me in prayer. Jesus, we ask you to help us do all the things with love. Give us wisdom to always make actions that will be of some good for community. Thank you for helping us grow through our work and through relationships, intellectually and spiritually. Strengthen our awareness that every job is honorable. Continue to teach us to donate with unconditional love. Bless our hands so that they will always be able to offer what others need. In God's infinite grace, we pray that we grow, nurture, sustain, and add a little mulch here and there, bringing our lives and community to a good place. In this time gathered here today, we bring to you those persons, concerns, and celebrations dear to our hearts that most especially need your love and strength, and we name them now as a community. We pray for those whose lives have been changed by the pandemic. 
Thank you to all the workers and caregivers and healthcare workers. May there be safety, healing, and hope for all. We pray for hearing, healing for And now, O God, we are one in prayer, but bring our own thanks and our own concerns. If some need to say, help me, or save me, or hold me, or forgive me, then let these be spoken now in the confidence of our hearts in a moment of quiet prayer. These and all our prayers, we gather together in the prayer which Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
the young people here they have lack of access to cultural resources, so being part of this is a very new experience. They're actually making connections with each other and learning each, about each other and, and finding out that they're unique themselves and it's building up their confidence. Remember you're thinking as a large team. This program is a life skills program that teaches people to be able to recognize and, and do change. Everything that the horse does can be parallel to people in everyday life. What we do in this week is we plant the seed. We plant the seed that things can be done differently. You can do better. You can communicate better. You can actively listen. All those seeds have been planted, and then every day we water them. And we water them with positive reinforcement. At first, lots of us were really, really scared, and like we didn't really know how to interact or what to do. We weren't taking the leadership role, and then that's one thing the horses taught us, because that if we weren't taking the leadership role, they were just gonna stand there and go do their own thing. Just watching the past few days, everyone's been building that trust in that leadership role and just making lots of improvements. It's another step towards bringing wholeness back into communities. After everything that's happened with regard to residential schools, I am so proud to be here to see young people get connected to culture, get connected to the special symbolism of their culture through horses. It's not just the effects of the residential school experience. It's also the impact of 500 years of colonialism, the loss of land, segregation on reserves, policies outlawing indigenous culture. Colonialism and institutional racism continue today. You see it in inequitable funding for education and substandard access to healthcare and other services. For healing to start, the proper resources, equitable access to services, and equality have to be in place to benefit the people. If these barriers are removed, these kids and Indigenous society will reach their full potential. The things that I learned here is uh, building trust, gaining confidence. I hope that they can take the positive, learn from their experiences with the horses, with each other and us, and continue to do some of these things in everyday life. Remember the work of our faith community through mission and service and our local communities. We appreciate your financial support now more than ever. Please use the donate button online or you can drop off a donation or send it by mail. If you'd like to use PAR or e-transfer, please be in touch with the church office. Thank you. We've made it through one more week without Robin and there's only one more to go. Next week, we'll be in Pinoca with Perry Wilson leading, and so we'll look forward to that. We have come to appreciate the supreme effort that Robin takes to connect and share his message. And a reminder that while Robin is on his well-deserved holiday, we still have pastoral care covered by our pastoral care visitors, Alan in Basha and Charlotte in Pinoca. We would also like to remind you that our Wednesday midweek reflection, the Thursday stories from the big instruction book for loving everyone, Friday music for meditation, and the Sunday children's story and activity will return in September after our leaders get some rest from the efforts they have shown over the past five months. Our midweek physically distanced and socially connected uh, gatherings will continue at 11 a.m. on Tuesdays in Basha and Wednesdays in Pinoca. We hope to be inviting you to services in person very soon. We hope. Uh, things are changing every day, so please watch for further, instruction, or further announcements. Please take care observing physical distancing when you're out, and remember, love knows no distance, and kindness and compassion are never cancelled. 
God of small seeds and mighty plants, you take our meager lives and with your love cause them to produce acts of loving kindness for you in this world. You hear our cries and find us when we are lost and wandering in fear. You bring us home with you so that we may be made whole, rejoicing in your goodness. Help us to joyfully serve you in all our days, knowing that you are always watching over us. Amen. Thanks for being here today, and we leave you with a song from Greg Holden. Hold on tight. <laughs> <laughs>